Hello. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Rod, and I would like to welcome those of you new to the Managing Digital Media Online course. This is the first in a series of three short introductory videos which will give you an insight into the advertising unit. I'm joined here with Martine, who is our course director expert. Hi Martine, thanks for agreeing to talk to us today. Today I believe we are looking at the content of the CAM advertising unit. Hi Rod, as always it's a pleasure to talk to you and your delegates. So this unit looks to provide a good insight into the role of advertising within the marketing mix and the marketing communications mix. It also covers an understanding of the process of advertising as well as advertising planning and measurement of advertising effectiveness. The study schedule breaks the topic down as I've just mentioned here. Would you like me to talk you through the first section? Yes, please do. That was the context of advertising? Yes, that's right. It really does look at all areas of advertising from its origins and the way the industry has developed, right through to considerations when carrying out advertising in an international context. For example, an organisation may launch a fully integrated campaign in the UK and then want to extend its use to certain countries within the African continent, where not only is the culture different, but also there may be limited access to digital elements of the campaign. The organisation will need to make decisions about whether to adapt its campaign for the local market. Also, I mentioned earlier that we look at the origins of advertising here, and part of the history of advertising brought about the use of the terminology above and below the line. This meant something originally when Procter & Gamble, one of the world's biggest client companies for advertising, commissioned so much advertising that their agency earned enough commission from booking their media to cover the costs of creative and production. Advertising costs, therefore, did not impact on profit, hence above the line. All other communications were paid for and so were referred to as below the line. This terminology is interpreted slightly differently now. However, the term above the line is still used in the industry to refer to mass communication, with digital and direct marketing referred to as through the line, and more targeted communications referred to as below the line. Mm. Does this unit cover the use of communications agencies? Yes, Rod, it certainly does. It looks at the nature of the advertising industry and relationships between the client, the agency and the media. It also considers how agencies are structured and the roles of key personnel within an agency. It is extremely important for marketers to consider the resources they have available. For example, in a small business, it may be that much of the communications activity is organised in-house. In a much larger organisation, there is need to consider both the availability of financial resource in terms of commissioning an agency, and also the availability of human resource with the necessary skills and capabilities. Yes, I understand. So in this section we're looking at advertising, whether done by an internal team or through the liaison with an external communications agency. So that concludes the first sections of the content of the advertising unit? Yes. OK, thanks Martine, that was very useful and has given us a good introduction to the context of advertising.